Hello friends and welcome back to my channel. Fox Hunter here and it is 2024 and I know we're about a week into the new year but I figured a great way to start this new year off is to start with a brand new lodge tour. It's been a while since we've gone and looked at my trophies. There's many more that have been added and before we get into that I wanted to say that just happened. Something weird happened with my stuff, but we all know that I have technical difficulties. Did I mention that there's no merch in the shop? Anyway, let's jump into our lodge tour. All right, guys, welcome to my flagship lodge of Spring Creek Manor 1. This was my first and original trophy lodge. And before we jump into the review, I just got to tell you, this might be a little bit of a long video because I have six trophy lodges with various trophies with different meanings, different backgrounds, and a lot of the reason for that is because I have had quite a few grinds going since I started playing. I, as a player, started back in 2016, 2017 when the game first launched, but I didn't become a serious player of the Hunter Call of the Wild until about the pandemic hitting in 2021, 2022. That's when I started noticing the trophy system, and before that, I wasn't paying attention to it at all. I actually uh, took down a diamond moose with the range 243 after shooting it 17 times. That's how knowledgeable about the game I was when I first started playing. Now I value all the trophies that I find. Many of them have really cool stories and those are the ones I'm going to tell you about. The lodges that I have built that enshrine my different grinds like my red deer grind, my moose grind, I won't spend as much time talking about each trophy because a lot of them just popped up during the grind. Just wanted to throw that out there. But without further ado, here is my very first trophy lodge. Many of these trophies have stories. We'll talk about just a few of them and we'll try to cycle through this as quickly as possible. So here we are in the grand hallway. It's immediately flanked by two diamond black bears that I got on my original SRP black bear grind when the great one black bear first came out. But unfortunately, I wasn't quick enough to take advantage of the initial release and I'm still looking for my great one black bear. So those two fellows flank the front. And then here we have some uh, white-tailed jackrabbits from Leighton Lakes. They're pretty common trophies, I understand it, so nothing super special about them. The entrance is flaked by two piebald white tails. Again, nothing super special, just some cool rares that I found early on in the game. I think this one's from back in 2021 when I first started actually saving my trophies. And we'll talk about the grand staircase here in just a little bit, but I want to start on the ground floor. So as we enter into here, there's also a lot of placeholders. So like, I have a nice blonde mallard right here. I have another one that has a really weird score, so it's going be cool to see. But then a bunch of piebalds and stuff and a diamond cinnamon teal. And then just some ring neck pheasants to kind of place hold until I could find something cooler. I have started getting more diamonds of this species so eventually these will be swapped out. But this is uh, my diamond antelope jackrabbit found on um, Rancho Del Arroyo. You can go back in my watch history and watch that hunt if you'd like. I don't remember the name of the video. It might be Rancho Del Arroyo provides but uh, please check that out and you can find it back there. This one was a very recent acquisition when I was multiplayer hopping looking for a melanistic pheasant. I call it my moon kissed rabbit, my albino antelope jack rabbit. And I'm sorry, but I think these are the best rendered rabbits in the game. They are the most beautiful. So I was very, very thrilled to find her. Turning around, we have, <laughs> gosh, this trophy breaks my heart every time I see it. It's a melanistic gray wolf. And uh, this was found on Yukon and it was in a pack with an egg white female. For some reason, I don't know why, but I had convinced myself that the egg white fur type was more common than it is. And so I killed them both, I taxied him and did not taxi her, and I've been kicking myself ever since. But there he is. We have a couple of diamond white tails scattered throughout all my lodges, so when we pop up into them, it's just white tails. There are two that I'll talk about very specifically when we get to them. And then this is one of the mission wolves from Quattro Kalina Sombra, the Iberian wolf. I wanted to pair these two up to kind of demonstrate the size difference between the gray wolf and the Iberian. Quite a size difference, which I think is fairly accurate to nature. So really, really cool there. Speaking of Melas, this is my godless rabbit that we found on a live stream when we were looking for the holy quail. And if you're not familiar with my channel, what the holy quail is to me is a diamond albino bob white quail. The rarest trophy in the game to get. It only spawns uh, in albino like one out of every 37,000. And then to get a diamond on top of that, 
We're trying to find the Holy Quail, folks. It's the quest for the Holy Quail. But while we were doing that, this guy hopped out. So you can go back and watch that live stream. It's kind of toward the end when this guy comes out and that whole hunt happens. So definitely worth checking out as well. Get another diamond white tail that I've picked up. And then my two melanistic female ringneck pheasants that I found multiplayer hopping, as well as this beautiful leucistic. So that rounds up this uh, trifecta of trophy mounts here. And then just another placeholder pheasant there. My room full of diamond turkeys all found on SRP in rapid succession. It was really, really cool to find all of them when I first started bird hunting. Bird hunting has always been a challenge to me, but over time, I think I've gotten pretty good at it, especially hunting upland birds like quail and, you know, ptarmigan and stuff with the shotgun. So I really enjoyed that. And then I threw in a diamond mountain lion. Now, this is not my all-time favorite diamond mountain lion. That belongs in one of my other spaces. But if you are curious about my war on the mountain lions, that was an actual video series I did declaring war on the mountain lions because they trolled me so much until they reverse trolled me. And that video is called The Last Laugh. So if you would uh, like to check out that unceremonious end to the mountain lion war, please uh, feel free to do so stupid jokes. Anyway. So turkey room, diamond turkey room, and then my first Iberian wolf diamond, it was uh, featured in a short called Short and Sweet, Iberian wolf diamond. You can go back on my channel and watch that. It's a pretty cool, really short, really sweet hunt. Hence the name. And then a albino roe deer. So I've had three of these so far. The very first one I ever found, I didn't taxi because again, I wasn't playing seriously and I wasn't considering trophy mounts and lodges and things like that. But when I started to, I did get two more of these. This one is from a multiplayer map that I just recently hopped on. You could actually watch this particular hunt in a video titled, Do You Do This on Multiplayer? Which begs the question, do you save trophies you already have on multiplayer for other people to harvest? so they can have that experience? Or is it a finder's keepers thing for you? Which in my community poll, overwhelmingly people said that it's finder's keepers. So I ended up taking this one anyway. But uh, my other one I featured in a video called Sylph, which is a cinematic hunt. Sometimes I do those just for fun, just to make it more artsy. So go check it out. And then my cute little collared peccary. There is a video about him too. Distinguished gentleman called Collared Peccary. So you can find that on my channel. It's a fairly early video. So go check it out. And then got to give a shout out to Glenda Beckstead, one of my channel supporters. She suggested multiplayer fairly recently here within the month of November, December to go and switch my hunt up to grizzly bear. And lo and behold, we found this beautiful diamond. So thank you, Glenda. That was pretty awesome. And then this beautiful albino turkey that I thought was leucistic that I actually hunted on New England mountains when it first came out. That is also featured in a video on my channel and it's titled the same way so you can easily find it. So there's that. And then this is my old man. He was featured in a very recent video called the longest lived trophy on Rancho Del Arroyo because he's just an old scruffy man. Diamond 59.5. I'm very pleased to put this trophy to bed because I have been hunting for a diamond coyote for ever since 2021 and I've had rotten luck with it. I love how his little ears flop to the side. That is so cute. And then we have just a collection of mallards from various color variations and sizes and piebald and they're very common. Pie, piebald are not considered uncommon or rare in uh, ducks unfortunately. They're a diamond dozen so if you do get a diamond piebald duck it's kind of a joke super rare trophy but this is my siberian mustier uh you can also watch a video about him called king of the muskies I'm really excited to find him i was not expecting he just kind of randomly came across him while i was doing some musky hunting and breaking up my moose grind but you can go check out that video as well now this moose, it's not nothing special. It's one of the largest moose I had ever found in the game early on in 2022 when I became serious about playing the game. And I just really liked his rack style. So he has occupied the space since then. And I don't think I'm ever going to change him because it's a reminder of like my early time in the gameplay, like early gameplay stuff. And then just a rosy elk. I have a lot of rosy elks because they were one of my favorite animals to begin with until that was taken over by red deer. And you'll see that in my red deer lodge. I do love the rosies. Their rack styles are so beautifully rendered. I just think the rest of the animal needs a rework like the red deers have recently gotten. So hopefully that'll happen soon. Coming into here, we have this nice gold Eastern Contail rabbit. I do want to replace this with a diamond one that I got back on New England mountains was my very first time I ever got a diamond Eastern Contail. I got to figure out which lodge I deposited in, but I'd like to swap these so that this one is featured very prominently in my flagship lodge, but that will come with time. 
We've got another couple of piebald ducks and then a beautiful rosy elk. I was collecting rack styles for a while. So like I said, there's quite a few of these scattered around. And then this is just a gold whitetail. And to uh, pair that up, I also got gold whitetail placeholders down this hallway that I will eventually replace with diamonds as I get them. I don't have too many diamond whitetail in this particular lodge because some of the ones I've gotten, um, I've just used as placeholders and fillers in other spaces. So uh, eventually, hopefully I'll just replace everything with diamonds. That's okay. This is my very first diamond turkey on Silver Ridge Peaks. I was very, very pleased to get this. You know, turkey and like I said earlier, birds have always been sort of a challenge. And now that I've actually learned how to hunt them properly, I've really enjoyed them very much. So I was very, very excited to get this feller here. And this particular whitetail, so he was my largest whitetail for the longest time at 271. That's quite a diamond whitetail. But he was dethroned in a video called Dethroned. And uh, you can go back and watch that. That's fairly early in my channel if you want to watch that one. And he had been in the main hallway uh, at the top of the staircase, but I replaced that with the community diamond, which we'll talk about in just a second. Kind of shifted everything around. So my largest white tail diamond is on display in this lodge, but in a different location. So that's one of my largest right there. Again, another rosy, just like the racks and back into the main hallway. So now we're gonna ascend the staircase. My white tails used to occupy this space, my biggest white tails, but this is my very first community diamond. And I call it a community diamond because A, the community taught me how to hunt these birds. And second, we got on a live stream together in a moment that was really super exciting. And you can watch this hunt on a video called uh, Rancho Del Arroyo Provides 2. It was also featured in a live stream of the same name. So it was completely unexpected and I blew everybody's eardrums out when I discovered that this bird was a diamond after having shot it. And it was just an amazing experience. It's one of my all time favorite hunts. That's why it occupies this space here. And then we just have some gold ducks ascending until we get to the top trifecta where I have three diamonds. Now these two were found on Tiawara, but the one crowning the top was found on Leighton Lake. And no, he's not the biggest diamond, but he's my very first diamond mallard. And I had named him Diamond Dave when I first spotted him. Diamond Dave was a heck of a trophy to get. He was uh, very challenging to get for sure because I kept seeing him all across Light and Lake. He would land in front of me in different bodies of water. No matter what I tried, I couldn't harvest him. He wasn't close enough until finally one day I did. So I just started referring to him as Diamond Dave. So that is Diamond Dave the duck. And then uh, up here, we'll go around on this side. Um, <laughs> this one isn't very special, except that I think the Ibex look like Sinestro from the DC universe. So Sinestro, anyway. And then just a couple of gold or not gold, but silver, probably botched the shot on him. Silver and gold moose. Um, I really should replace these because I have so many diamond moose, it's not even funny. When we get to my moose lodge, you're gonna see not even half of my moose diamonds because a lot of them are still in the trophy manager and I am just too lazy to swap them out and we'll explain them when we get there. But over here at the very top, this is my largest white tail that dethroned the previous one I just featured at 272.6. So he is absolutely massive. This one was on Rancho Del Arroyo and the other one had been found on Leighton Lake. So very awesome trophy. I was very pleased to find him. Uh, very surprised actually. And then swinging around to this way, cause that's where I always go. Just another big old moose. This was one of the largest ones I had found at the time in 2022 and was the first time I encountered this particular style of rack. So I really enjoyed it. So he'll probably stay here just because it's very nostalgic for me. And then a uh, muley and I have had real challenges with diamond muleys and level fives trolling me until very recently. And you guys will get to see my one and only diamond muley that I recently got. Thanks Jody. Check that out in a minute. Now this is a black tail, but I only harvested it because I like how it makes a heart shape. So that's why that sits there. And then this is one of my rooms that features some of my favorite trophies that I personally got. This is a tiny Sika deer. Now I do have a lodge for the smaller animals. Some people call that their lodge of shame. I don't, I love the small animals. I call them twiggies because they're tiny and they're twiggy and they're very cute. I don't know that this was a legitimate twiggy though, because what to me a twiggy or the smallest animal of their species is, is an animal that scores a natural bronze 
when taken with full score integrity. So you use the right ammo, you place the shot into a vital, that sort of thing. I don't know that he met those standards. I think he was a level two and he might've been a silver that I just botched the shot on, which is why he's in here, not in my Twiggy Lodge. But I'll have to do some investigating on that. Uh, another placeholder rabbit that I really need to replace. Um, and then a diamond Capricali, I have quite a few of these, but I love them because I mean, look at that sass. Just look at that sass. Anyway. Then we flip around and guys, I just recently got a blue diamond wildebeest. I have been recovering from a migraine, unfortunately, and not playing at my recording setup, but out on the couch with Mr. Fox while he has watched TV while I was recovering. And in during that process, I finally got a wildebeest and it's gold. I love the gold coloration on these animals. So not a super rare, just a uncommon diamond, uncommon. Really pleased to have him and replace the old gold one that was sitting right there. And I paired it up with this leucistic mallard because I just love how the colors work with each other. Another diamond white tail. And then we have my three melanistic mallards. So these two boys were both found on Teowara within two days of each other. I think one was an instant respawn. But my very favorite trophy of all time for the longest time was this melanistic female mallard that I found on Leighton Lakes. I found her before Diamond Dave. And I featured her in one of the very first videos on my channel that compared the lighting system before and after the Reventuli update. Because back before the lighting system, like these lights in here was fixed, after the Reventuli update, she used to glitter gold. It was beautiful because of the pinpoint light on the feathers, but now she doesn't do that, which is unfortunate, but she's still really pretty with that green oily sheen right there. Look at that. Isn't that beautiful? Oh my gosh, I could stare at that all day. So one of my favorite trophies right there. And she'll always occupy this space. She used to be above the bed, but I wanted to pair her with the other males. So moving on, just another whitetail. I'm not even sure why I have this one. It was probably just early harvest, early exploration of mounting the trophies in here. But this one's pretty cool because I follow another YouTuber called, uh, originally called Kill Clinton. He's now KC Planet. And I watched a video of his where he got an albino Rocky Mountain elk on his map of SRP. And I thought to myself after watching that video, hmm, I wonder if I have one on my map because I really didn't hunt these animals very much at the time. And so I went and explored and lo and behold, I had one myself. So thanks Casey, really appreciate that. And then we have just a feral pig. I did have footage of this hunt, but unfortunately some of it got corrupted, so I don't have it anymore. This is also a viewer inspired diamond. Coopinator, thank you so much for giving me the challenge of hunting a diamond red fox. Found this on Yukon. It is featured on my channel as well. This is a long track hunt. It was not taken at his drink zone. Uh, I actually followed him to a deep woods rest zone, which made it all the more special when we finally harvested him. So very awesome, Trevi. Very awesome experience. And again, Coopinator, thank you so much for suggesting it. Moving on in here, a lovely piebald access deer that I gave to my community. And by gave, I invited them to watch me harvest it because I saved it for them after discovering it a few days before. And I wanted to take it on camera and on live stream as a way to thank my community for their support. And that's what we did. I like how her eyebrows make her look constantly angry. And then this guy's kind of sad. He is my second diamond roe deer, but lately, especially since the Labrador Retriever update, many of the animals on Quattro Colinas freeze even worse than they did before down at the riverfront. I don't know why, but it affects all populations across the map. So it's not an isolated thing. He was one of them. And to be honest, at the time I was hunting him and other roe deer, which is where the video Sylph came from. I just didn't want to deal with tracking him out. So I took him while he was frozen. So he's tucked away in the corner here. So I'm just like, yeah, I got him, but eh, was it valid? No, nah, not really. <laughs> I'm gonna jump across here real quick because there's two white tail that I wanna talk about that are just amazing, but another Western Capicali diamond, my first black grouse. I think I have a film on this somewhere on my channel. And then this was my wonky feller, Roosevelt. Oh, I like the wonky fellers cause you know, they're a little crazy looking. This used to be my room of weirdos, but no longer. So uh, I need to make a whole lodge for wonky fellers. Let's come over here. Um, this is a magpie goose. I don't have a diamond of these yet, but this is a female gold which I don't know how often the females make gold, so that's why I saved her. She was the largest female I'd ever seen of any of the bird species, really. So I just kind of held on to her just in case it's a rare thing. And that brings me to these white tail hair. He looks so bewildered, like, why am I here? This one and the one flanking on the other side have some of the lowest racks. They hang so low off of the head, and that's what 
caught my eye about them. It's just wild to see. I've never seen racks sit that low on whitetail before, at least before that one, and then since this one. And I find that this particular rack style seems to be very infrequently spawning, so that's why I have those. And this is, <laughs> with its ridiculous trophy rating, the smallest white deer I currently have. Now, I used to have one smaller than this. He had little tiny twigs for antlers, but I made a mistake and accidentally deleted him instead of this one when I was cleaning up some of my trophy manager. Hey, EW, time out on my tour. If you're watching this at all, please, please, please give us a way to organize and sort our lodges easier because stuff like this does happen and it breaks my heart when I accidentally delete something I really don't want to delete. We really need a way to sort by trophy level, fur type, whatever. So please consider adding that to the game. Ding. Anyway, so back to this. So he is the smallest for now until I find something smaller. Now, in the same video where I got my diamond coyote, I also found my second piebald coyote. My first one was this one in 2021, and there was really nothing special. He was on Layton Lake in a pack. They ran by, I shot a few of them, picked them up, and then all of the whole found I had actually taken a piebald out. Didn't know otherwise that he was a piebald. And then I found this lovely female on the same hunt that the longest lived trophy on Rancho Del Arroyo came from. So beautiful experience as well. But one thing I love about this was having them paired like this. Let me back up if I can do it, is you can see how robust the males are compared to the females. He's definitely a little more chunkier than she is, so pretty cool. And then a brown hybrid male. I thought brown hybrid might be an uncommon, that's why he's here. And then my pale hazel grouse, very lovely hunt. You can see that too, that's a fairly recent hunt as well. It's also featured on a video on my channel. Now these are some specialties, melas and albinos, and it was just featuring some of the more otter hunts that I had, so she was a pretty cool find. And then one of the most coveted rares in the game, a melanistic coyote that I found on Layton Lake a long time ago. Unfortunately, botched the shot. He should have been at least a silver, but I tracked him for such a long time. And you know, you get to a point where you just shoot in frustration and that's what I did. And luckily he wasn't a diamond or a super rare. So still have him, still really cool. And then this one was a recent find as well called the Elusive Shadow Cat. I had seen her sitting by a lake during my moose grind for my great one moose. And I thought it might have been a trick of the light and I didn't want to break my moose grind to go looking for her so I kind of kept it in the back of my mind until the moose grind was over and then I went and started searching Link's drinking zones lo and behold she was real like I started questioning throughout the moose grind if what I had seen was real or not because it could have been the shadow from the trees because it, it was that one time I saw her and I never saw her again the whole time and my moose grind lasted six months so it was very lucky to find her finally this was an accident. <laughs> this was Silver Ridge Peaks. And again, I was not really serious playing the game. I had just started becoming interested in the trophy system. Didn't even register that this was a level five. Shot him and realized he was diamond. And luckily I had the presence of mind to save him. And then this is also featured in a video on my channel. And it's combination hunt on for Honga Savannah featuring this albino, as well as a gray mouflon female from Quattro Colinas. So really, really cool trophy there into this room uh, we have one of my two bob white quail diamonds one was found the day that the labrador retriever was released and i was able to play on mississippi acres and the other one my very first one i actually found on new england mountains near an outpost very cool diamonds i love these birds they just happen to also be my favorite fur type for the bob whites the red brown so very very cool i have quite a few diamond pronghorn these aren't very special except that this one has a sweetheart rack very cute and then my row of albino white-tailed jackrabbits. Now you'll note in all of my lodges, I have quite a few rare fur types. And I think it's because my RNG tends to lean toward rare fur types versus large animals. Because a lot of my diamonds that you see, again, are gonna come from grinding. So I'm very blessed in that way, but it's also very frustrating because trying to get things like, oh, I don't know, great ones has been a challenge. Uh, another gold white tail. This is the blonde with the weird number, the 9.199 across the board. So I do have two blonde mallards. I think I might have a third one flopping around on Leighton Lake. Maybe. Maybe to Aurora as well. Oh my gosh, my one and only black tail diamond. This was a great hunt because on the Runachi side of Leighton Lake, there's that hidden lake at the top of the mountains. And then just past that, uh, as you go down off the mountain on the other side, there's that other lake. Well, I had just hunt at the secret hidden lake and then ran down all the way down to that lake on the other side of Runachi. And 
heard a black-tailed deer call and I spotted a gold and I was tracking this gold and found their feed zone and as I'm watching this gold feed up from behind him rises this crown of an antler set and I was just like oh my gosh that's the largest rack I've ever seen on a black-tailed deer and lo and behold it was this gentleman here and I took a front shot on him <laughs> I took a frontal shot on him and I was so nervous. I ended up putting it right into his right shoulder, into his lung, I believe. And I had to track him a little ways. I was so scared that I botched that shot, but luckily I did not. So that is my one and only black tail diamond. I do want to go back out and hunt black tail. I do want to go do that. I need to do that. And then I think this is just another diamond. Yep, just another diamond. I've picked up hither, thither, and yon. So there's that. And that completes my flagship lodge of Spring Creek Manor 1. So like I said, we've got five other trophy lodges to get through. Again, some of them grinding, but others with other special trophies. So let's go ahead and jump and just do them in order. All right, guys, welcome to Sasika Safari 1. I consider this an extension of Spring Creek Manor 1. So this is like where some of my favorite trophies come from, not my grinded trophies like my moose. So this one's really, really cool. Let's go ahead and head on in. And I'm always polite because I slap myself with the door. And then immediately as you enter, flanking us on either side are my Diamond Roosevelt Elks. I technically should have a third one, but I botched the shot on a third one and was really disappointed in myself, but I don't have that one. These are my two, both from Layton Lake, obviously. I can't remember specifically, but I think one of them I tracked really deep into the most extreme northern part of the map where it's very mountainous. So that one was a bit exhilarating trying to get into a position to take him through the vitals. But the other one, I think, if I remember correctly, was just a quick, oh my gosh, there's a diamond. And shot them in a feed zone or a drink zone. So one of them was a long track hunt. One of them was, hey, oh my gosh, a diamond. So let's start by going into this room here. Here are some piebald whitetail that I absolutely love because th through mounting them in this way, I realized that there's basically only one style of piebald whitetail, which is very disappointing. I wish they would expand on the different variations of the patterning of their fur. But I also really love how they're locked in combat like this. And like I said, placeholder diamonds throughout my other lodges. I really should do some reorganizing and move these back back into like Spring Creek Manor, but yeah, we'll get there eventually. And then this is my one and only holy quail. It is an albino stubble quail. This is featured in a short and a live stream cutout and also my best moments of 2023. I love this little trophy. He is just fantastic. Look at him. He's just so cute with his little face. Anyway, so great trophy there. And then coming over here, uh, Pribald roe deers, male and female. I really like how they pair up and they look with each other. And I had her paired with a piebald female musk deer for a while, just because the patterning is very similar. The size difference was also really stark and contrasty. So, but I decided to update that with a male and female instead. And then there's this wonky feller. Now he, <laughs> this, oh my gosh, this particular diamond with his big horn and little horn. I had filmed this, but I got embarrassed of my reaction, so I deleted the film and did not post it. So I'll tell you the story now. This was on Silver Ridge Peaks. He was at the very extreme southern end of the map. You know where that little body of water is, where sometimes you'll see animals across near the edge, so close that if you shoot them, they'll actually cross off the reserve and die so that you can't reach them. He was there, took him out. He ran across the border and died off the reserve. I'm not about to let a wonky feller diamond escape my clutches. So what I did was, and this took me about 10 times to do, got an ATV and rode as close to his body as I could within that 10 seconds before they respawn you, like multiple times, jumped off my ATV, picked him up, and right as I picked him up, I didn't even get to see the full harvest screen manifest. I blinked out and got responded. And I remember screaming into the microphone, what does that mean? What does that mean? And when the camera fades back in, there's the harvest screen. And I was like, oh, I got him. Yay. So I know it's not illuminating it because it's backed up right there, but yeah, that was a very frustrating diamond, but I was not about to let that filler go because I mean, he's just stylish right now. And then here's another one, you know, just another diamond. Fill in and all that. He's a little small for a diamond, I think. 
And then uh, Leucistic Turkey also got film of this that corrupted, but this was found on Silver Ridge Peaks. Pretty cool rare fur type. I love the Leucistic look. That slate gray is one of my favorite colors. Really awesome to find disturbed vegetation and then go track it out and figure out where it was. So pretty, pretty cool. And then this was a placeholder goat. I love the goats. I think they're beautiful. And the rework on them recently with Emerald Coast release has really done even more to really endear them to me because I really love how they look. And he was a placeholder until I got my dancing goat diamond, which we'll see in this lodge in just a little bit. And this is just a gold hazel grouse trophy, a uh, gray. I didn't know how uncommon gray was, but I don't think they're uncommon at all. So I think he's just a placeholder for now. And I think this is just another diamond cinnamon teal. Cinnamon teals and some of the ducks are some of the easiest diamonds to get, really. They make diamond pretty commonly at level two. And then these are placeholders I've had for such a long time. What I will say is that the bronze Eastern Turkey is my favorite fur coloration for the common and uncommon furs for the turkeys. I wish there was more bronzes out there instead of just the plain browns, but Miriam's and Eastern Turkeys are, are a little bit different. So, but I do love that fur variation. I do need to update these though. Ah, my diamond axis deer. This is also featured in a video on my channel that you can go watch. It actually inspired me to go back to Park Fernando and try to look for yet another one, but I ended up getting my very first diamond water buffalo as a result. So that's also featured in a video on my channel. This was taken on live stream. This is my one and only female diamond Gemsbok. Females more commonly make diamond than males in the species for some reason. I remember when my community was watching me and I picked up a track and they're like, that's a max weight track. And I didn't register immediately. So I had to go back and look for her <laughs> stream. And it was pretty cool. Very glad the community pointed that out because I had no idea and that was awesome. This hunt is featured in a short and I'll be honest, I'm a little disappointed in the diamond racks in the sandbars because they're so small and narrow. I feel like they should be a little bit bigger, but you know, looking at the species in real life, this is actually fairly accurate to some of the larger trophies out there. So yeah, EW does a really good job kind of bulking up the diamonds and making them look really impressive. But for this one, it was just a little shocking to see something so small make diamond. But there you have it. Placeholders. Just pure and simple placeholders as I was experimenting with lodges. There she is. I need to move you to Spring Creek Manor. I mean, my goodness. I, maybe that's why it was so close to diamond, the gold one in Spring Creek Manor that I uh, was using it as a placeholder. But yeah, so there she is. New England Mountains. It's actually featured in some of my New England Mountain videos. So go check it out. My first community diamond multi-mount. We built this over a period of months doing live streams, hunting for diamond of all of the Ibex species on Quattro. So this was my very first of the community multi-mounts. I do have another one that I will showcase here in just a little bit, but as you can see, uh, let's click through them. We have a Basit Ibex that's orange at 197.5. We have a gray-brown Gritos Ibex at 104. <laughs> A Southeastern Spanish Ibex with one of those weird trophy numbers, 89.59 repeating. And then our 108 Ronda Ibex, that is gray. So he's the only odd man out with his coloration. I might eventually try for a brown one to make it all uniform, but maybe not. Again, we all found those on live stream. So let's head down this way. And some of these rooms, I gotta remind myself what's in here. <gasps> the Moonlight Cat. Okay, this is one of my favorite hunts. It's a video on my channel. This cat mm, would mock me. He would show up and I'd try to shoot him and I'd miss and he'd run away. And this went on for a few days until I finally tracked him down to a beautiful moonlight lake. He blended in with the rocks really well, but I still managed to sight and, and take him down. But it was just a fun little hunt. And I dedicated it to my sister, Sophie, who was the one who introduced me to the Hunter Call of the Wild since she knew that I loved the hunting game genre. Sophie, once again, thanks for pointing me in the direction of the game. It's my all time favorite game now. And then just a random piebald whitetail that I've place hold, held here. Again, lots of rare fur types. I think the RNG on my particular game just skews me to rare fur types and it's just not a lot of large level animals unless I really try for them. Speaking of which, so these are my two Sika deer and I gotta figure out, okay, so this is the one that I first got. This is featured in a video on my channel, a uh, short and sweet hunt. It was five minutes or less where I was on multiplayer and it just ran by me while I was looking for red deer and I wasn't intending to hunt it. I shot it with my 30-06, which is my favorite rifle in the game. Thought I might've messed up because I didn't know if that was the proper class of weapon for this animal, but lo and behold, turned out to be my first diamond. So very pleased. And then later came this one, which is also featured on a video on my channel. I think this one's yeah quite a bit bigger than the other one. Happened to randomly come across him on tail. Laura, so very cool. 
diamond banding. So I was having a really rough live stream, needed a boost, needed something to kind of lift my spirits. And so this guy came running out of the shrubs and it was a very quick turnaround on the shot. No setup, no nothing, just a almost a hip shot with my <laughs> rifle and just managed to score diamond. Very pleased. There's a short that features the sun and you can go back and watch the live stream. So really lovely diamond, really much a morale boost. Big rack moose have a ton of these. When we go to my moose lodge, you're gonna see a lot of diamond racks, all of which probably need to be replaced with the large racks that I still have in the trophy manager that I just haven't done anything with. So yeah, ugh. This is my reverse troll mountain lion. It reverse trolled me. Go back and watch the War on the Mountain Lion mini series and you'll understand why. This guy's a jerk, you suck. Anyway, and then just a diamond turkey to fill the space in. So that completes this room. I know I have a lot more to fill in in these lodges. I really do, and I really need to get on that, honestly. I have so much to add. And in here, okay, so these are really cool. This is that diamond water buffalo that I mentioned that I got as a result of looking for another diamond axis deer after having gotten one on Emerald Coast, finally. But jump map looking for another diamond axis deer and saw this guy in a field. This is a really awesome hunt. You can go watch it on the channel. I really encourage you to. It's one of my favorites as well, so pretty awesome. This guy I held on to for a really long time. He was a level eight mythical. I, for a long time, after the hunt on this guy, I assumed my brain computed it wrong. And I thought this guy was my diamond and I just had left him in my lodge for the longest time. Turns out that was my first diamond. This was my placeholder and I was confusing this hunt with this hunt over here. Now, I wish to cookie crisp. I had been a YouTuber when I got this animal. This was one of the hardest hunts I've ever done in my life on this game, and I am so proud that I actually made full score integrity because by the time I harvested him, I was done. Done, sir. Done with your nonsense. Because for Honga Savannah, in that top northeastern corner on the right-hand side, I kept seeing him feeding, drinking, all up in that quadrant there. I chased him for days. The wind was never right or it would shift in the middle of me crawling up on him. He was super sensitive, super spooky all the time and could not get close enough to him. So after days and days and days of trying to get set up on this shot, I just foot chased him. I foot chased him for a good 200, 300 yards, stopped, had lost visual on him was up a little bit on the high ground and was looking around, turn around, and I saw him kind of do a U-turn and start running back through some shrubs. So I hip shot at him. I just hip shot at him. I was like, I am done. And lo and behold, I landed the shot in his lung and he dropped and I did it. <laughs> I did it. This was one of those hunts where I was like, anyway, so I wish to goodness I had gotten that on camera. This is my very first roe deer. It's also featured in a set of videos where I had come back from a long absence and had done some hunting on Quattro Colinas. You can see it, it's a very short hunt. It, it's one of those, he came out from behind one of those straw hay bales on the map, saw him walking through and set up real quick on the shot. So it's not like a really long intricate hunt, but I was very pleased because he was my very first roe deer and he's so tall and elegant as well. I like how he stands over here and gets lit up like this. Let's, uh, let's admire that. Perfect. Let's so isn't that just pleasant? I just love how the light wraps around him. He's very, very elegant in that way. All right, so moving on. This next room we're gonna go into is a really cool room. It's my room of specialties is what I call it. But before we do that, we gotta look over here at this little ptarmigan. This is my very first male willow ptarmigan and he scores nothing. He was grounded, that's why he doesn't have a score. He just, he has sass. I mean, look at that face. How can you not? He's just sass incarnate. So that's my sassy ptarmigan. He's featured in one of my earliest videos. This is one of my earliest Western Capricallies. Nothing special about him, just placeholder. And then over here, we have a couple of different birds, a male gray hazelbrush, so I guess they're not uncommon. And then the bright female Western Capricallie, which I think is an uncommon fur type. So I just love that color, it, that beautiful orangey color. So she'll occupy that space. And then a couple of diamond, Western Capicalis, really cool. One of these is my first one ever, so. Anyway, there's nothing else over there to look at. Nothing in this room yet. So over here, my room of specialties. As you can see, 
rare fur types galore. Some of my best trophies in this space. So let's go through them. This is Lady Leucistics. She was featured in a video called Lady Leucistics, and I am so disappointed in myself because I accidentally shot her in the head with an arrow thinking that I had actually, you know, vitaled her properly. I did not. I did not. It was my first time hunting them with a bow, and it was also a very frustrating hunt. And you can see my frustration in that video, so please go watch it if you'd like to watch my soul leave my body. She was a, a challenging hunt, and I turned her into a unicorn. Now, he was just a leucistic that I found on Silver Ridge Peaks very early on. Didn't really give it much thought. Just took him, you know, with the usual shot. So, eh, wasn't really thinking in terms of trophy lodges and community and what these represent to different people at the time. So, piebald cinnamon teals, just to kind of round out the specialty fur type look in here. A piebald green wing teal, which is my one and only of this species. So, really, really cool there. Then we've got the two only piebald blacktail that I do have. And then this is my diamond dancing goat. Now this came about during my red deer grind and there was a day when I was hunting red deer, but goats. Goats kept screaming, running in front of me, following me around. It was a thing. They wanted my attention. So the video is actually titled, They Won't Be Denied. And it's about the goats and how they interfered with my red deer grind. And he came trotting up and it's a really fascinating watch because I spotted him from one end of one river, jumped to a tent on the opposite side and then shot him, didn't place the shot right, and then saved it. I won't ruin it for you, go watch the video. But he, I call him my dancing goat because when I originally had him posed, I think I had him on this stand here, I had him up and dancing and I, I really love that pose, but my room's filled up since. This is my highballed female Siberian musk deer. I do have another one that's still alive on Medved that I discovered during my moose grind. Haven't harvested it yet. Probably gonna wait a while before I do that because I already have one. And then this was found on live stream when I restarted my hunting profile. Now that's something I didn't mention earlier in the video. I have had a grand total of three hunting profiles on this game. A very, very early one that corrupted and I lost everything. Then a second one that I played and got to level 60 and it was my main. But during my moose grind, I broke and I did something stupid. You can go back and watch all my videos if you want to figure what I, what that was. But I decided after that, that I just wanted to restart my game and start fresh. So this is actually my third hunting profile. So after exploring Leighton Lakes again for the first time on my third hunting profile, we found this beautiful trophy, which again, needs a rework, but absolutely love the rosies. Love that I've got a piebald one. This one's the albino female from Rancho Del Arroyo Provides. I paired it up with this. Now, both of these, Leighton Lakes, I have them locked in Eternal Combat. This is one of my all-time favorite multi-mounts, so love this setup. And then I paired him up with a Mela that I got on a multiplayer server on Rancho Del Arroyo as well. I think that fills out the room nicely there. And then my twin, uh, well, not twins, they kind of look twinish, but one's a piebald, one's a leucistic. Leucistic Plains Bison, she was the other half of Lady Leucistics. Found them in the same day on the same hunt, so definitely uh, worth going and checking that video out. I actually found this in uh, videos I was doing on Hirschfelding leading up to the Great One Fallow being released because I was trying to cite some fallow need zones just in case, but then I ended up doing my grind on Teowara anyway. But I ended up finding her while doing a commentary video about the upcoming coming Great One Fallow release. Now this one also was featured in a video called What the Heck Was That? Because she just breezed past me while I was running through Medved, just running around. And so I ended up tracking her out. I ended up not shooting her properly, but still I got a piebald rain gear, which is pretty cool. And then just another placeholder piebald female, a white tail, just to kind of show the different fur types. And then my melanistic magpie goose. This was a pretty cool hunt, very quick hunt. One of the YouTubers I know, Jebba, had invited me to his lodge to check out some of his trophies, and he had one of these, and I was like, man, I love melanistic birds. I think they're some of the prettiest trophies in the game. And I went back on my Emerald Coast map, and I was looking around, lo and behold, I had one on my map, and I ended up shooting this one out of the air, which if you know me in my hunting style, that's a rare occurrence. So I was very, very pleased to finally get this girl here. And this is my other female albino roe deer from my my second roe deer hunt. This is the sylph. Or no, this isn't the sylph. Is this the sylph? Yeah, this is this is the sylph. Is this? Or are you my first? <gasps> Did I figure it out? Do I know where she is now? 
let me check on that. See, I have so many trophies, I can't remember which one's which sometimes. But yeah, so maybe I did save all three of them. I don't know. Wait, how old is this? No, you're not self, and you're not... You must have been my very first. So where's the other one? I'll find her. Anyway. <laughs> Oh my gosh, so that happens to me a lot. I forgot to mention that this one, my albino mountain lion male, this came as a result of the war on the mountain lions. A very cute little hunt. If you want to go watch it, it is on my channel as well. <clears throat> that does wrap up this particular lodge, so we are going to go ahead and jump to our next one, so stand by one. So welcome to Spring Creek Manor 3. There used to be a Spring Creek Manor Two, but for some reason, when I was consolidating trophies, I consolidated all the ones from two into three and deleted two. I assumed that the numbers would switch automatically, but they didn't. So this is three minus two. Anyway, so you'll notice that this is kind of my bear lodge. This has a lot of the diamond trophies that I got from my initial grind on Silver Ridge Peaks for the Great One Black Bear. So really nothing special. One thing I do want to say is for me, like I said, rare fur types tend to spawn more commonly for me than I noticed for other people, but God forbid, I don't even have my first super rare, guys, so it's, it's great. I would love to have my first super rare. Anyway, I have a lot of spirit bears as a result. Like, I see them every other day, and it makes it kind of sad because they're supposed to be kind of uncommon, you know, more uncommon than not. And I see them all the time. So for me, they're not super uncommon, which makes them a little less valuable, but I do love them. They are a very beautiful trophy. So I have quite a few of them actually saved and we'll see them throughout. And we'll go up the stairs in a minute, but I am very pleased and very proud of that trophy there. Again, work in progress, mostly my bear lodge. I'm eventually gonna start filling this up. Okay, these two are a sad tale in and of themselves. So when the black bear great one was first launched, there was an issue with the mission system on Layton Lake of the particular mission track called Mr. Black. And when you got to Mr. Black, in that glitch period, he would come back, sometimes if you logged in and logged out, has a great one, not an official great one because you didn't get the music and you didn't get the whole shebang with it, but he would spawn in as a great one. I tried that glitch. It worked-ish because when he spawned in initially as a great one, he came as the one with the star on his forehead. I can't remember, I think that's the speckled. But then when I saw him later, he was the chestnut or the brown one. And so I was like, it works, but it doesn't really work. It's not an official great one. But I wondered if the same glitch mechanic will work for other diamonds in the game. So as I was grinding on Silver Ridge Peaks, I thought if I find a diamond black bear, I'm just gonna log out and log back in and see if that applies to other diamonds. And I thought it did because of these two bears. You'll note that their trophy ratings are ever so slightly off, one at 22.8 and one at 23.1. So they kept cycling between the mean zone I was hunting. I would see him, then I'd log out, log back in, do a couple of rotations, and then he'd pop in. And so I thought, oh my gosh, the score changing. So that must mean if I keep doing this enough times, the diamond will come back as a great one. No. No, that did not happen. I finally got frustrated and killed him first, then went and found him in a nearby lake, and I was like, oh. Yeah. Anyway, so that's the story of the two false bears. Anyway, <clears throat> moving on. So, oh, some dilute muleys. I do love this fur variation. They're very, very cool. I do have one alive on my Rancho Del Arroyo map right now. That's a female. I just haven't harvested it yet. But again, diamonds, black bears, grind. This one is not a diamond, but I do love the gray fur type for the brown bear. So I do have quite a few of these in my trophy manager, as well as the cinnamon brown bear. I was just collecting fur types for a while. Uh, ain't he cute? He's just a little diamond bear. And then, like I said, very kind of sparse down in here because that's really all it is, is just placeholders for that, which I'll eventually start filling this up now. Ah, Jody. My very first mule deer, very recent acquisition at the tail end of December. Really cool trophy because as you can see, he's crossed and fused at the middle. I don't know how common that is for these particular trophies, but that is a really cool feature. And I think he makes him unique to me. So thank you once again, Jodiosity, for opening up your map and letting me explore. I really appreciate that. But one of my favorite diamonds as a result, there is a short about this one and you can watch him in the top 10 hunts of 2023. And then one of my other diamond ring pheasants so that is just again placeholding a gold brown bear which is pretty cool 
And then I think this was my largest access deer at the time. I did like his rack. I thought it was pretty cool. So just again, placeholder. Now the gray Canada goose is actually, I do have a gray Canada goose. And then again, just kind of sparse. Uh, moose diamond for my grind. Ugh, this one. Melanistic female brown bear. This is a creator's faux pas, if ever there's a creator's faux pas. And when I reset my game and reset my hunting profile, I went running through Medved looking for my moose need zones, including running down that river down the center. And I kept seeing this bear up on the upper right hand side as you're going from north to south. And it looked really dark. But, you know, it's very forested in that area, so I assumed that was just roving in the shadows. Some nagging part of my brain, though, kept telling me, Film this! Film this! It's special! Film this! And I ignored it, and I shot it, and then I went up there. Lo and behold, it was a melanistic. And I did a little video about how it was a faux pas, and I wished that I had filmed it, and... Uh, just a travesty. You know, I'm gonna reset the time so that there's sun. I didn't realize how late it had gotten. Let's do this. There we go. All right, that's much better, guys. So, yeah, isn't she gorgeous, though? That beautiful silky black color. Man. Yeah, that, I wish I had filmed that and set it up as a better hunt. All right, so... Black gold is rare for wild boars only, not wild hogs, not pigs, boars. So this was a multiplayer find, not the most impressive score wise, and it is a female, but still, it is rare for wild boars. So if you find one, take it. And then we have a molting female. I was trying to compare like just the fur types. So these were recent acquisitions after the Labrador Retriever launched. So that's why they're in here. And then this is also a very recent hunt, tail end of December, with a video that I titled, I've Got the Blues, where I was looking for my male melanistic pheasant on multiplayer, but the bobcats kept interrupting, and just like previous hunts I've mentioned, I just switched targets, and I've always wanted a blue bobcat, whether it's an eastern bobcat or the Mexican bobcat, and I just happened to have one on my map, and it was just a species I hadn't really hunted before. So he's an initial spawn, pretty cool, and I paired him up with a couple of just birds that I had, here we have a bicolor willow ptarmigan, which I think is uncommon, and then a dark black grouse, and then just a gray ringneck pheasant. Now I do like the gray ringneck pheasant. I do like that coloration. It's almost leucisticky, but not quite, but it's still really good. Hi, friend. Yes, bewildered, like, why am I here? So my near diamond chamois, so close. He's just like 0.2 off or something like that. So biggest chamois I have. If you come on my live streams, he is the chamois that is featured in my I Will Be Right Back screen. Paired him up with some really cool Irish dancing music, so pretty awesome there. We got a couple of trophies in here. This is my albino female plains bison. I really should display her on a full body display. This one was very disappointing because I had footage of this hunt that, again, got corrupted. And so I didn't have enough to put out for the hunt. So I kind of just stuck it here until I can come to terms with that. And then just another diamond turkey over the fireplace. Now, this is also a very recent acquisition. This is actually one of my first diamond trophies of the new year, 2024. You can see the date stamp there. Again, recovering from a migraine. Been sitting out on the couch, just running for Hong Savannah. It kept calling to me for some reason. I've started kind of a loose lion grind a little bit. While I was out there running around for trophies, I had found a level five that trolled me. And then I found the second level five that did not troll me so that that was pretty cool, and there should be a video coming out about that if it's not already out, so you can watch that. My twin albino chamois, so they were hunted on the same day. I know that looks very sus, and they're exactly the same score. One was an instant respawn. Sometimes that happens in the game. You'll take a trophy or an animal, and it'll have, you know, a particular score, a particular fur type, and then maybe you go to the main menu and come back in because you're resetting, you know, their spook status or whatever, and that's exactly what happened with these. It happens very rarely, very occasionally, but that's what happened with my melanistic ducks and with these particular trophies. So you can go watch these hunts. I did post about these as well. I think I called the video Shammy Jammy Party or something like that, but you can definitely go check them out. But I'm very happy to have them for sure. 
This particular one features my one and only diamond of the reindeer or caribou species. They troll so often, and it's not a species I like to hunt as a result, but I paired them up with two golds that I thought had interesting racks. The rack on this fella is really wide, like one of the widest I've ever seen on reindeer. And then this one was just so beautiful how tall it was and now it's almost touching in the center. So not the most impressive sleigh sold separately because they're not all diamonds, but hey, I like it and I like how he's featured up front. Uh, gray scrub hairs that I just recently put in from my recent hunts on Verhonga. They are an uncommon fur type. I do like uncommon and rare fur types. I don't limit myself to just the rare ones. So um, very, very cool to just kind of have them sitting around. And then this is my female albino Iberian wolf. I came across her on a lake quite by accident on multiplayer and just she was in a, a spot where she was perfectly aligned where I could take her fairly quickly. So really, really cool trophy there. Another diamond capper Cali just sassing around. And then this is my second community multi-mount that we worked on, which is called Fangs Out. Finding this diamond mouflon was really, really challenging. It was very frustrating because I got trolled multiple times. You can watch several of my live streams about that. And then I paired it up with all the pale wolves from the map, including some of the mission wolves. So you have Phantasma, which is a male diamond. You have an albino that actually came out of nowhere and attacked me, which is featured in my top 10 hunts or top 10 moments of 2023 video just freaking wild just was running following a different pack and i guess he was a solo male just resting up on a hillside just came out of nowhere growling snarling and it was wild really cool encounter and then a winter fur type which is that muddy uh gray looking one i think or maybe it's this grayish one right over here but whichever one it is really cool with all the pale wolves chasing a diamond move on curls out um, and that's pretty much for Spring Creek Manor 3. We'll end right here with my crossed Mewy. Love that trophy. And then we'll jump over to my next one. Okay, guys, so we've only got three more Sasika Safaris to go. Just three more. So let's figure out which one this is. Okay, this is the Red Deer Lodge. And so it's going to be a quick breeze through on this because, again, lots of just grind trophies really but to start flanking in the front here are my two only melanistic red deer also featured on hunts that you can watch on video one of these guys came from the video about my dancing goat they will not be denied you'll have to look around in some of my videos to find them but yeah really really cool spawns from my red deer grind one thing i do enjoy about the grind is how it brings out these rare fur types. Now, for my super rare, I do not want to grind a super rare. I want a super rare to happen naturally and organically as much as possible. I grind for great ones because it's about the only way you'll ever find them unless you're flipping lucky. And I work full time, I have a family. It's impossible, pretty much. Even EW and Jackson Beard have come out to say that that's the intention. Even if you're a regular player, you're very unlikely to find one in your lifetime. So they are, like one in a bajillion, but I want great ones. It legitimizes my channel. We'll talk about that in another video. Anyway, so red deer, red deer, red deer, red deer, all red deer. Um, did you see what those are? There's a gold and a bronze. I One of them I botched and I'm pretty sure it was that one. Uh, red deer, red deer, red deer. And I love red deer so much that at one point in my history, I was gonna harvest every single rack style and then build this lodge out so you see the progression of the racks as they grow from their smallest form to their biggest form. That didn't materialize. Yeah, just a uh, red deer. Every flipping where. Now this guy is special. This is my very first red deer diamond that I found on Quattro Colinas. I had followed the advice of one YouTuber who said, start at a specific lodge at 540 in the morning and then run the river and you should find lots of red deer need zones. And I did that, I followed that advice. And in one of those riverfront need zones was this guy and just absolutely blew my mind with how beautiful his rack was and that's what set red deer fever and i had a really wonky wild goose cheese kind of grind going where i was hunting red deer all across maps where they exist so park fernando quattro colinas teowara until i finally settled on teowara for my formal red deer grind and it was only until i started using herd management that i started seeing really great results i personally feel that using herd management does help spawn great ones. I'll have a video coming out soon that explains why I think that. Two weeks after I started using herd management and groomed my zones down to the way I wanted them, I got my great one. So that same thing happened with moose. So eh, you have to make your own determination, really. 
And then this was the little tiny Siberian mess deer female that I had paired with my roe deer female that was piebald before moving her and pairing her up with the male roe deer and the female roe deer together. So moved her. And then this is the gray female Iberian mouflon I mentioned previously. Gray is a rare fur type for mouflon. So if you do see them, pay attention because you know, you don't see them very often. So that was pretty cool. And then I do have this little fella. This is my other diamond bob white quail. So I have two of them, one in my flagship lodge and one here. This is my first one. So really, really awesome. Thanks Daisy Dukes, my dog for helping me find that. And then just red deer, red deer, red deer, big racks, big racks. I was getting big racks a lot before the great one spawned in. So there's quite a few of them up on my walls. I got eight in like a one day period. And then, you know, my piebalds. Several of my piebalds have come from multiplayer maps. So a lot of these aren't really from my grind, the piebalds necessarily, but definitely all the diamonds, even the, the knuckle rack, I guess, as it's called on either side. But uh, yeah, so coming into here, I do have a couple of albinos in here. Sometimes I get the stories mixed up anyway. But yeah, because looking back at the time frames, to 10. Yeah, this is my very, very first albino red deer. This was found on Teora at the most extreme southeastern part of the map on the right hand side. He came running out of a vineyard. I just remember sitting there stunned watching him run across the road because it was like, there's no way. Just an initial spawn albino on my map. Holy moly. And then these came about as a result of my grind. He's the one I shot with the arrow because he's tiny. I don't remember you. Where did you come from and where did you go, Cotton Eye Joe? Sometimes it just, it just happens that way. So I'm going to talk about the central trophy here in a minute because this is actually very special to me. It means a lot to me, actually. So just going to, you know, diamonds, uh, split rack diamonds, eight, the knuckle rack. Um, oh, and this is a weird little room with just piebalds that I've picked up, again, mostly on multiplayer almost exclusively on multiplayer is where all these came from. Just hopping maps. And then this particular sheep is a female with curled horns. Yeah, very, very difficult to find. I had heard of them. I had never seen them until I found one on Rancho Del Arroyo. There's a very short, like two or three minute video about this called, is this my first super rare? Which it technically is not, but it is so hard to find a female bighorn sheep with a full curl in their horns. Pretty rare if you ask me and then just a couple of piebald ducks. I think I found both of these on New England and you can actually go watch that. Huh? And let's see, more, more, more. You can see the different rack styles. This is where it starts to get less about diamonds, more about the rack styles. And yeah, so just diamonds, diamonds, diamonds. This is my dark brown male lion. Now, sad thing about the dark brown male lion, this is actually my second, but the only one I have taxied because I didn't realize dark browns were rare and I let a gold one get away. So now I have the silver one, which, cool. But I wish I had my gold one. And then this one's just a wonky feller. Just found him on multiplayer. He's just wonky. I do love my wonky fellers. So there's that. This particular one, now the female was found on multiplayer, but the male. This is featured in a video called The Long Game, and I really wanted to hunt him with a bow. And I was not going to compromise, and it took me literally hours to get this trophy. It turns out that I had my tree stand set too far back in one space where they were not programmed to go. So I had to move it up into dangerously close territory to him and finally called him in. You can actually go watch the video. At one point during the hunt, when I was sighting him with my bow, I accidentally let it go and shot him in the face. And I freaked out because I'm like, there's no way I'm going to let this trophy get botched. I have worked too hard. At least let me have a legitimate shot. I just accidentally let go of the mouse button. And so I did that trick where you log out before he dies and log back in to reset everything. I did not know it at the time, but the community typically looks down on this as an exploit, like an actual exploit. You need to accept the shots that you place for what they are. And so I just kind of casually mentioned in this video, you know, I'm going along like, oh, you can do this if you need to, to reset your shots. And that's where Lady Justice came flying out of the background. Jodiosity, who I've mentioned a few times in this video already, 
called me out on it, but did so in such a respectful way that, you know, I was inclined to listen. Because as I play this game, I'm trying to choose to play it in the most ethical way possible. I want my shots and my trophies to be legit. And so when she called me out and said, you know, people tend to look down on that as an exploit logging out and logging back in if you botch your shot, I really appreciated that to bring my awareness to it and not in a way that was like, oh, well, you're not legitimate. You obviously cheat when you play this game. So I really, really appreciated that. And as a result, I put out a community poll that asked, should I destroy this trophy because it was gotten with an exploit? And they all said, no, but don't do it again. So I've listened and I really appreciate that very, very much. Jody, thank you for keeping me in check. All right, so nothing in here. Ah, slap myself with the door again. I uh, don't think there's anything in here. Um, and then, of course, my great one room. Now, he's not a great one, but he was a really hard hunt, and I don't know where else to put him, so he's just kind of chilling in here, being like, hey, sup, sup. One day you'll be a great one, I'm sure. But these are them. Crowning achievements of any hunter on the Hunter Call of the Wild, save for some pretty awesome super rares. These are my great ones. This is Eidolon who is my great one moose. He's the fabled Teuton with the typical rack. It's a word that means a specter or a phantom, but I already had a ghost of the woods video about an albino moose, which is one of my all time favorite hunts. So instead of naming him like specter or phantom or something, I chose to name him Eidolon. But the other definition for Eidolon means an idealized person or thing which has really significant meaning for this trophy because a lot of people idealize their experience of hunting the Great One Moose and actually finding it before they actually have the experience of grinding for it and finding it. So there's a double meaning there for me and that's why he's named that because this was one of the most uh, frustrating hunts, frustrating efforts I've ever put into this game. This is what caused me to restart my whole hunting profile, but I couldn't be more pleased with the combination I ended up with and the experience that I had in finding him and, and eventually taking him out with the traditional bow on live stream. Pretty cool. You can actually go back on my channel and watch that stuff. And I do have a video coming out talking about whether or not it was worth it to drop all of my other projects and just solely focus on this for a six month period on my channel. And the answers may surprise you. Anyway, one of my favorite great ones is Sir Calico here. Again, I've named them all. So Sir Calico, it was actually kind of a co-effort to name him with Koopanator. Thank you so much. So Sir Calico, he's really fancy and you can watch this. I've cut this into a video and you can watch the live stream and the build up to it. Totally awesome hunt. So glad I found him and took him on live stream. And then my very first great one, Scotty McGuffin. He's got the short rack for the great one red deer because there's three rack styles for the great one red deer. There's the short, the medium and the large. And I ended up with the short one. But he just looks so small and he looks like an angry little Scotsman. Kind of reminds me of my husband, Mr. Fox, but yeah, he's awesome. So those are them. Those are my three great ones. And I am currently working on my great one, Bear Grind. And that is going to round out my Red Deer Lodge. So we've got two others to get through and then we'll be done finally. So hang tight. So welcome to Sasika Safari 5. Now, Four happened in as much that Spring Creek Manor 1 and 2 did and ended up becoming just 1 and 3 because I did some lodge consolidation and deleted 4 when I didn't need to and established number 5 and you know it's a bunch of nonsense. Let us rename our lodges that would be really cool too. Anyway so since we were talking about the moose grind I figured we would jump to Sasika Safari 5 to see the results of my moose grind then go to my final lodge of Sasika Safari 3. So welcome to Sasika Safari 5 my moose grinding lodge and flanking us as we enter are my troll super rare twins. I hate both of you with a passion. Both level five, both were the rare fur types, both trolls. That's all you need to know about that one. Nothing's over here. And here we are, ladies and gentlemen, the ghost in the woods. One of my favorite all time hunting experiences. I made a cinematic hunt out of this. There's a long and a short version. There's a basically a director's cut and a theatrical cut. You can go watch them. Out of the experience with both my Great One Moose and this one, I think I actually edge out this a little bit more as far as which one I prefer because this was just magical. Like the whole experience of 
of finding him and tracking him and the lead up to it and being able to pair him with beautiful music and stuff, it was just a great experience. So one of my all time favorite hunts. Now you'll notice some fallow deer in the background. I guess I should say this is both my fallow grind and my moose grind because that's exactly what it is. It's really both of them. You'll look around and you'll see diamonds, 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 diamonds of all different types, all different sizes. The thing is with my moose with these small racks, not the big racks, but these, these smaller kind of wonky, weird looking racks, I have enough big rack diamonds to go around and replace almost every single one of them now because of the way my moose grind was. And this guy's a little short. I've got a few of these little condensed big rack guys, which out of the big rack moose are my favorites. Um, you'll see them throughout my lodge. So diamond chocolates down the hall, diamonds sitting up there, diamonds, diamonds, diamonds. These are the Battle of the Paddles. I had these two on the map at the same time. They're very close in size with a 299.8 and a 299.4. Coopinator once again coming up with the title to name these. So these were my very first big rack moose, these two right here. And then this is my large. No, I think you've actually been replaced, sir. Hold on here. I may actually have a bigger one. So 399, that's a 301 that I'm working with. But you'll actually get to see. See them? We're at 301.96. These are all big racks. They are not small racks. So do I have one that's big? That's probably that 301 right there. 300.31. 300 well, that one might be a, a smaller boy. That might be one of those little short big rack ones. Or a split rack. Yeah. Okay. So, yeah. I think this one's still... Unless this, that .391 um, beats it out. It's probably the same, actually. So, yeah. I've got a couple of these now. It used to be my biggest. And then, like I said... A lot of these I can replace with big racks. That's a gold. Um, let's uh, let's stick a big rack up there, cause why not? Diamonds, diamonds, diamonds. Now this is sad because what was in this spot was the moose that was the pair that I took out with the ghost in the woods. There was that one, and then this one just love that particular rack style. I need to replace the one that's missing, but I gotta go back and compare dates and make sure that I get the right one in that spot. I accidentally moved it while I was doing a thing on live stream. So yeah, anyway. See, that one didn't troll. Ugh, God, I hate that rack. But yeah, recent piebald I just got because I had left him on my map by accident, but pretty cool. But yeah, diamonds, diamonds, diamonds. Let's go down the hallway. Diamonds, 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 diamonds. Anybody want some diamonds? Diamonds, diamonds, diamonds. All right. Uh, Diamond Gray Wolf. Oh, yeah. Yeah, he was my very first. Very angry. Very, there's a video about him that I, I'm in trouble. That was a, and I think I made it into a short as well, but uh, it was, they, I got attacked. I saw him. I was like, oh gosh, I botched the first shot on him, but managed to land the second one and luckily got him. So, yeah. Got trolled a lot by that species too. Diamond sinking into the wall. Here's my little short rack. This was my very first short rack big one. Short big rack, I guess you would say. He's so tiny, but he's got that big old fat rack and I'm just like, aw. Nice gold. I think this one, I had, I, it was diamond potential and I had had hope as a level four that it would make it, but it didn't quite get there. It's just a little too skinny, so. And then another one of those little short fat racks. Oh my gosh, I love that. I'm just gonna call it the fat rack. If anybody has a problem with it, my channel. Diamonds, 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 diamonds. But diamonds everywhere. Now there are some specialties in this back room, so I always try to reserve this room for specialties. So my collection of piebalds. Or diamond. This is actually my very first diamond fallow deer, this white one in the front. I got him on Emerald Coast the day it released. It was my very first diamond fallow, and of course the great one fallow came out with that release. I was so excited, and then I just started filling up with diamonds and paired them up and made a huddle fallow, and did that with my piebalds I started getting on the maps, and you know, these were all just products of the grind. And after a while, it is kind of sad because after you start seeing these so frequently, they kind of lose their charm. 
and you get to a point where you're just like, okay, that's great. Where's my great one? Okay, that's great. Where's my great one? Kind of thing. If this is my tiniest albino looking him. You can watch this one on my channel as well. There's a short little hunt featuring him. It's just itty bitty. Not my smallest moose by far. So actually that is a good segue into our final lodge, which I won't do a jump cut for this one. I'll actually just go and hopefully I won't sink through the floor, but Sasika Safari three, as you can see, like I said, I've been collecting for a while. I haven't even started on this yet and I really should, but I'm really hoping we get some lodge updates. We really need some lodge updates. A bigger, more open space, open floor plan lodge would be great. Like almost a warehouse style, I would even say, with maybe some landscape features in it or something like that. Less about furniture, more about the mounts themselves, and more multi-mounts would be great. But this is the final lodge, and this one is extra, extra special. And you're like, hey, folks, how can it be more special than your great ones? It can be. Ladies and gentlemen, without further ado the twiggy room the twiggy lodge this is one of my favorites these are the smallest animals of their species very hard to find twiggy is an honorary smallest of the species because technically he's a level two but he still would have scored bronze had i not botched the shot which is a very sad video if you go and watch twiggy's fate and the whole series around that so he is the smallest animal that I had seen that got me into the whole Twiggy persona, the Twiggy atmosphere, I don't know what you call it, the Twiggy trend. But these are all the smallest animals of their species, minimum scoring level ones, twos, that sort of thing. So ladies and gentlemen, Twiggy the red deer who got it all started. And then you just move on and you go from species to species. My Twiggy piggy, a wild boar scoring only 19. My twiggiest of two twiggy mooses, their minimum scoring 36.1s. The one over there on the wall is as well. Yeah, these are the smallest ones of their kind. Now things like goose, you see level ones quite frequently, so you gotta shoot them frequently to make sure you have the smallest of their kind. At a 3.9, I think he is pretty much the smallest you can get, but there's always that chance, so I'm always on the lookout for them as well. Tiny bob white quail at 130. All taken with full score integrity, with the exception of Twiggy himself on the center, the red deer. He's the only one in here who is, uh, well, actually there's two. But you can see because they have no score that they would have scored a natural bronze had I taken them with full score integrity. But here is a wild hog. Rocky Mountain Elk, you can actually go and watch this hunt on my channel. Uh, Caribou, uh, also taken on live stream, shot him incorrectly. No score, but he would have been a bronze. Found his track, this European bison. I had to look at the little gender icon a couple of times to make sure I wasn't looking at a female track. And that's how I tracked him out and got him. And then his little friend over here, who is a 15.1, you can see this in a short as well. Just to prove that moose, 36.1, same score as the other. And then a rare level one male black bear scoring only 12.8 after a full score integrity. So yes, this is the Twiggy Lodge. Now we do have some placeholders in here, just so I have places to store these things, but just going around and you know these smaller animals again because you see level one so frequently you have to shoot them frequently and then make comparisons make sure you've got the smallest of their kind but it's worth it this one's really small at a 0.8 i had video but it wasn't very good video i wish i had found a way to salvage it but that was a good hunt and then i have three melanistic moose from my grind that are just kind of stored in here as well as my eaters over there 1.2 with the european rabbit now, here's the thing about roe deer. They're already small animals, so this one I actually botched the shot on, but he is tiny, tiny, tiny. He is the tiniest rack for a roe deer that I've ever seen, and I don't know that they even get smaller than this. So he is kind of an honorary twiggy. There are some rules that we can flex and bend a little bit to allow smaller species to be allowed to participate in the twiggy program, but... And then my Twiggy pronghorn that I found just recently on Rancho Del Arroyo that I was not expecting. Found him on live stream. I think we were multiplayer hopping, but he is so tiny and full score integrity on him. So like I said, there are a couple of trophies in here that aren't Twiggies. They're just really placeholders until I can find space for them. I don't know how I'm going to just have to redo a lot of my stuff. Here's my Twiggy Iberian Mouflon. Look how tiny he is. Also found on multiplayer. Like a little female. Oh my gosh. But full score integrity. Full score integrity. So I don't think these are 
trophies of shame. I love them. I love the little guys as much as I love the big guys, and I need more of them. I need more of the Twiggy trophies as I find them. So both gotten on live stream. This particular one was when Emerald Coast first came out. Found him while I was, you know, just hunting my map on live stream. Saw the weird speckling on his uh, skin and realized that that was not a traditional color pattern. Freaked out about it. I think there's a short you can go and watch and watch that particular hunt. And then this one was on my most recent live stream commemorating the fact that I had finally broke the 1000 subscriber mark. That was a challenged live stream because of some technical difficulties, but I was very glad to find this rare fur type toward the end of the live stream to kind of make up for some of the challenges that I had. So I'm pairing them up and to kind of compare and contrast their coloration which is pretty cool. That's it, guys. That's my updated trophy lodge for 2024. Thank you for sticking it out. I know it was a long one because I just have a lot of trophies, a lot of them from grinding, and I'm looking forward to what 2024 brings. My projects as they stand right now is I'm working on a Great One Black Bear grind on Mississippi Acres of all places to get my Great One Black Bear, and then I'll round it out with Whitetail, and I'm hoping to do that before the next Great One is released, which probably is coming with the new map, we haven't gotten any word from EW or any hints from Jack Beard on that, so I would assume so because they're so popular anyway, but I think it's going to be Wild Boar. That's that's my, my two cents. And if you want to know why, we'll come to a live stream and we talk about it. I really want to make this the year that I find my first super rare, and I want to find it organically and naturally if I can, if it happens during one of my grinds, oh well. But I think that would be really cool to find one just just organically. I want to get the last two of my great ones before the new one comes out or barring the fact that I don't make that deadline because again I have a family and I work full-time at least get the next great ones to round it out to the end of the year in anticipation of even more to be released in the future and just keep growing the channel. You guys have made this so worthwhile in terms of you know, creating content and being a presence on YouTube and in the community. I know I'm still a bit fringe, but for those of you who have found me and have stuck it out and have become like the rocks on which I build my foundation for this, thank you so much. I really appreciate in more than words can describe the level of support that everybody has shown me because what started off as just a fun little hobby has really become a second passion of mine. And I really want to bring a professional product to you. And that is why my goal by monetizing my channel is to fundraise for an actual capable <laughs> gaming computer that can do both the video and the streaming. Right now, if you don't know and you haven't been with my channel long, I am gaming on my husband's laptop, which is specifically designed for streaming. So video editing takes a lot of processing power and I want to have a desktop computer that can do both. So if you choose to support the channel in a financial way, whether that's buying membership or doing a super chat during a live stream, all of that money is being put toward that goal. So it's, it's in a savings account, hopefully accruing some interest. And I'm hoping that by maybe the end of the year, I'll have enough. My goal is 3000 to get a really solid gaming computer. It would be awesome if I could do that. We'll see what happens. I can't make stuff like that happen or be inspired to create more content without people like you. If you don't support the channel financially, that's just fine. The best way you can support the channel above all things is to watch as much of each video as possible start to finish. That's what pushes me out to the algorithm. It's great to subscribe. It's it's great to like, it's great to engage in communication and chatting and comments, but what the algorithm on YouTube looks for is how long you stay on each video. Are you captivated by this content? And if you are, great. And if you just want to let it run in the background while you're watching TV or doing the dishes, that's fine too. I appreciate any of the support that you guys are willing to share with me and any of your time that you're willing to share with me because that's what makes the magic happen for me in doing this part of it. So thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you to my moderators who have done such a great job helping me out this past few months during my live streams. It's taken some of the burden of vigilance off me. So I really appreciate your willingness to help out guys. And I cannot wait to see what the year 2024 brings for all all of us. Take care and I'll see you on that next adventure. Bye!